Attack Zerker. Alright, this is Scott from Tech Zerker. Here we are with the QWP10, which is a Windows mobile device from Chinese manufacturer Q. They make a lot of other Android and Windows devices, but this is their first Windows mobile phone. Yeah, it took a little while to get here, coming through AliExpress, but it arrived just fine. Uh, it mostly came in the box that you see here, with just a basic FedEx package around it. Uh, reminder on the specs, it is a 6.9 inch, so really 7 inch, uh, phablet. Uh, the screen resolution of 1280 by 720, so it's not 1080, but at the same time, for a $200 device, I think the screen will still look pretty good. It's the Qualcomm 220 1.3 GHz quad-core processor in it, which is similar to my Lumia 650. Uh, 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs longer onboard storage, along with uh, support for micro SD cards. It's 802.11 wireless up to wireless N. And the cameras are a front 2 megapixel and a rear 5, so we're not really expecting much of the cameras. And it's a dual SIM 3G, 4G device. And it comes in at 250 grams and should be fairly hefty. So here we go. It's a fairly plain, basic looking box. Big, heavy, white tablet inside. Let me pull that out and set it to the side. The rest of the packaging there is this uh, VIP card written in Chinese that we uh, don't really know what it does. It has a code on the back there, but we still don't know what it does exactly. Windows Central had the same comments on theirs. And under there. We've got our charging cable, no uh, North American charging brick on it, but otherwise it uh, does the job for us in micro USB. And then our SIM card removal tool, the uh, manual itself starts in Chinese but does have an English section uh, farther back here, but most of it's pretty basic. And then same with your basic like warranty guide and some other uh, quality check token there. So we'll close that up. Comes in this little bag here. Now this one did have screen protectors on it. I peeled them off in my first recording and then my recording froze. So there we are. Your standard white tablet it actually feels well built. The screen doesn't have a lot of flex or movement to it. We've got our headphone jack on the top, our slot for our micro SIM and micro SD cards on the left side, our micro USB charging on the bottom, and then our power and our volume rockers on the other side. And same when you look at the back, very basic printing, Cube's logo in Chinese, along with the model number and details. But otherwise, it looks fairly well built. We'll get it turned on there so you can see the screen initially. Now when it loads up, it starts off with the Snapdragon logo and then goes to Cube's logo in Chinese before the Windows logo. I'll just let that load up there. screen itself, from this angle at least. It actually looks nice and crisp, especially for a 720p screen. Obviously it's got reflection because you can see my webcam in the screen in details. But I'll run through the setup because that's a pretty standard uh, Windows Mobile affair from Microsoft. And then we'll return once it's set up to uh, the initial Windows point. Alright, 
here we are. We finish the basic setup on it. Get our normal start screen there. So there we are. Screen looks good on it. We can go in to settings and see if we're on the large or the small tile mode under personalization. This is definitely a screen you would want more tiles on given its size. Yeah, that's already on. So that's giving us that display because it's 720. You can't get the extra row yet that you would if it was a 1080 screen just because of how Windows is reading it. Otherwise, everything looks quite well on it. We bring up things like the weather. It loads up nice and quick, snappy. So, for a mid mid range mid range processor, it seems to work just fine. And it still has access to all the regular services, like the store. Now, the one caveat we'll go into here next before I come back here that Windows Central reported on as well was that it's on about a year and a half old version of Windows Mobile and isn't approved for updates normally. So, when you go in and go to Phone Update and you check for updates, it goes out there. I'm going to search here for a minute or so. And then it'll come back and say there's no updates. Now I did find some articles online on uh, modifications you can do to this in the registry and whatnot to tell Windows Update that this is actually a 950XL Lumia. And then it'll come back and find updates. So I'm going to test that out on this device later and write an article about myself. I don't think it'll be something I'll do a video on because it'll mostly be step-by-step uh, -step instructions. It'll be kind of boring to watch. Go back to the main screen there. Otherwise, everything on it seems to look as you'd expect. The screen itself, when you go into things like news stories, is sharp and easy to read. I'll bring it a little closer here just so you can see. There we are. And then finally, let's go to the store and grab a quick game or something that we can toss on here to see how quickly it loads up compared to other devices. Of course, being me, I'm going to put Minecraft on there just to uh, see how that loads up, even compared to my Lumia 650 with just the one gigabyte of memory. It should be a little quicker on here, and obviously the bigger screen. Now when I do my full review of the unit later after playing with it, that'll be as long as this update works to get it up to current Windows Mobile version with Skype beta and other tools like that. So I'll also be able to see if there's any performance differences between those two, which there should be based on how much the Lumias have improved in the last year just from OS, OS updates themselves. All right, here we are. It took a little bit for it to download and install Minecraft, mostly because my wireless is a little tapped tonight. But there we are. Installed fine. And we launch that. So far it's loading up. Uh, yeah, it's a little quicker than my Lumia 650 currently does. And then we'll just go ahead and play create a new world and we'll just see how quickly it can generate a quick survival world of any type. This is the one thing where my 650 seems to struggle 
is it takes a while for it to get through this stage and actually get into the game. Even although even my 950XL seemed to at times really struggle at the generating world and uh, getting running phase, so it could just be Minecraft on this platform because it's definitely quicker on devices like my iPad. And let that load up there. That's a little faster than my 650. Not by a huge amount, but a little bit. Loads up, and it will go through its rendering there in a second. There we are. Yeah, it's still definitely a little quicker. Not by a huge amount, but definitely faster by a smidge. run around and see what type of world it gave us. And we'll probably fall into a hole right away here just because of how I'm one-handing this. Oh, kind of a nice river valley. Otherwise it seems to play smoothly. And then we'll just close that for now. That responded quickly enough. in the store, in the news, and everything else we have open. And there we have it. It's a still a relatively economy device, but it feels actually well built. It's solid. The uh, silver rim on it gives it nice protection and doesn't look as cheap as some do. Like it actually feels well built. And everything seems to work on it. So the next step for me will be seeing if I can follow through the instructions that I'll at least link to the article from here on getting this updated to the more current Windows Mobile and then we'll run around with it for a week or two and see how it runs I'll probably put my SIM card in it for a few days to test out the phone and text capabilities and we'll go from there so there we have it thanks for watching this and we'll have more soon from TechZerker